Welcome to the Rack of the Week 120. Hey, we need a change of pace. How about we look at somebody else play some straight pool for a little bit? This is uh, pro player Mike Zuglin, and this is a match from 1993. I don't know a lot about Mike. I haven't watched him play a lot. There's not a whole lot of video of him playing. I know some of you do know him and uh, have seen him play. Uh, let me know your favorite Mike Zuglin story in the comment section. Fantastic straight pool player. And this is a great rack by Mike that ends in a fantastic way in the next rack. So we'll take a look at all the way through there. The, um, he's got an inside angle on a break ball that's kind of far from the rack. Now, if you were going to watch uh, Joshua Filler or Jason Shaw, maybe Thorson Holman shoot this ball today, they're going to shoot this probably a million miles an hour with follow and try and get, that's just, get this rack wide open. But this is 19. 93, how, how, do, how did players play this shot back then? Did they do it a lot differently? What, what do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think. My, my uh, answer is yes, a lot differently. This is uh, kind of what I've been paying attention to as I watch matches lately, um, especially the break shots. A little more, uh, more control on the break shots. So the cue ball is going from, from, the, from that ball that over here, into the, oop, uh, over here somewhere, into the bottom of the rack. So you know that balls are going to move this way. You're not going to get any object balls back over on the left side of the table. And, and the cue ball is going to go this way. So play it with some control. You're either, you know, the cue ball went to the bottom rail and then back up this far. That way he's either going to have a shot in this side pocket or this corner pocket. I think that's the wise way to play that shot. Even on today's faster equipment and polished balls and everything, rather than trying to blast it open, which increases your chances of missing the shot, play it, play it old school, a little more control. He's playing position on the break shot for one of these. Now, that left a cluster of seven balls in the center of the table, but so what? That happens all the time. That's straight pool, and that's what makes it beautiful. Let's see what Mike does with this. Now, from this point on, I hope not to... Uh, um, Stop the video too much. We'll just let it let it run. This is a tactical rack, and what I mean is, there's rebreak situations everywhere. He's got to play for a shot to open the rack right now. So what is that? Yeah. So he's going right to the eight ball. I, I guess the six doesn't go, or he would have used that. So he doesn't have to come away with a shot here. So do you, you force follow straight into the cluster? That's what he did. Well, he didn't really force follow. He kind of stunned forward into it. He got, only got one shot out of it, this ball on the side. And if I think he, I think if he had a different angle, he would want to roll forward here so he can cut this ball into half a pocket and then go this way to open these balls up with this as an insurance ball. But he doesn't have that. He's got the other angle. So the two ball is his insurance ball, his next shot. But he's got to try to nudge balls open here. Notice he didn't blast into them. This is tactical play with control. He knew he was going to have a shot on this ball next. And as it turns out, he's got a shot of the balls as well. So, and this is a tough rack because he, the balls are clustered. And they changed the camera angle on me, but he's got two balls against the rail that he's got to deal with, the 14 and the 6. Watch, this is rail first. See that? He doesn't have to hit it hard. You hit that rail first, that cue ball takes off. So you don't need to play it hard. And he's just playing cue ball to the center of the table. Now, once again, he's only got one shot. Actually, he does have a shot on this dark ball to the left. Uh, but that's a break ball. So he's evaluating his options. It's tactical play. And he's going to cut this ball thin without touching the one to open up those other balls. Cue ball coming back out towards center table. This is when you, you, you don't have a specific insurance ball, but you're, just, you're playing your options and keeping the ball alive. And that's what he's doing. Now, from this point, you, a, a lot of people might shoot this too. I think I would want to shoot this too. Clear the, clears the pocket for the 14, but where's the cue ball going to go? So he's doing a sacrifice here. He's shooting off his, his best potential break ball. Look at this. I, I'm going to pause the video for just a sec because if I was going to shoot that ball that he just shot, I would want to stun the cue ball straight this way. That opens up these balls, and this is an insurance ball back this way. Mike did something much wiser. He, he, I mean, what ball control? That wasn't accidental. He played the cue ball 
through here to the bottom rail to bump balls. In that way, he still has the insurance ball, but he's pushing balls this way to potentially make a break shot. Pushing balls this way doesn't accomplish that. So tactical play, really smart. And once again, he only has one shot to shoot. What do you do here? I think now you've got to address the two ball because that clears the pocket for the 14. And then somehow you've got to deal with that 6 and 14. So he goes all the way up table and back down. That's the right play when you're so thin. If you try and feather that ball softly, it, you get more cling and you, you're more likely to uh, hang it up in the pocket. So hit it with the speed that, that is, is best for it to go in the hole and center, ball, uh, center table position off that shot again. Now this time I think his cubicle got a little bit out of line. He didn't want it to he didn't want to be this thin on the nine. He probably wanted to be here instead. But with that angle, it's, it's hard to hold it. Now I'm going to pause this because this is the first spectacular shot that Mike shoots. When as I'm looking at this, I see two options. One is shoot the, this three ball in the corner all the way up table. Uh, cue balls are off the rail. I think that's a high high percentage shot. You can either stop the cue ball there for the one or the nine or. Let cue ball roll forward and shoot the six next because that six isn't a, a, of a lot of value. It might be better to get rid of it. Um, if you shoot the nine, which you could choose to shoot the nine, what I see happening is the cue ball hitting the, this, this uh, I think that's the seven ball. And you, you just kind of want to hold the cue ball there maybe for the one or knock the seven up so you can get a shot on that. But neither of those is Mike's choice. Watch the cue ball. This is, this is not accidental. This is uh, really... Uh, professional knowledge of the cue ball. Did you, see, did you see what he did? I'm going to back it up. There's just enough room. Look at the tangent line uh, for the cue ball to go through here without touching the seven. But that takes it in this direction. He has low left on this, or at least low, which curves the cue ball around the seven and makes it go straight up table. That is an extremely... Uh, professional and uh, tactical knowledge and control of the cue ball. See that cue ball curve? What a shot. I mean, it doesn't look like much, does it? If you're sitting in the audience, you might not even know. That was an amazing shot. From Now, think about how clustered and, and messed up this rack was from the beginning. And he's just out shooting these shots. None of those shots were very missable. Look at the situation of the balls with five left. Man, that is just smart play all the way through the rack. Here, I think that the end pattern should be pretty obvious. There's actually two ways to play it. The six leads naturally to this ball. Not much you have to do with the cue ball. That's what naturally means. And you could you could go seven one and come up center table to shoot the fourteen and come across. I don't like that. That's getting from the fourteen over here is really hard to control. And a ball like this below your break ball is great for a key ball. So he's going to go. Six, seven, and then come up seven table, center table for the 14. You have you can play uh, to a lot of different angles on this one, and you have. I've talked about this before. There's multiple ways to get from this one ball onto the break shot. You can go straight up. You can come low and stun. Up, you can go two rails around. Lots of different options. So from this point, pretty natural end pattern, and that's by tactical play by Mike uh, picking balls apart in the right way. Really smart play. I'm going to let this go through to the uh, the second shot into the next rack because it's amazing. I like what Mike did there, and you see this from a lot of the pros days too, and it's something that amateurs don't do. So an amateur is going to try and play that pos play position on the 14 by bringing the cue ball with a lot of spin all the way over here. Well, you don't need to get there. And that opens up a scratch in the side. You can under hit it and the cue ball stops here. Um, you, if you over hit it, then the cue ball's on the rail and you have a hard time holding it. The, the correct way to play that shot is just not much English. Go ahead and let yourself have some distance because the more distance you have, the more forgiveness you have on the angle of the shot. So that's, a, that's the professional way to play that positional route. Now it's easy to uh, to make the ball, and you can do a lot with the cue ball from here to get on that one ball just right. So he played it to stun out, and he's got the perfect angle to follow forward. 
just a little bit of uh, inside spin, left English, and you're on your break shot. I like how he's taking a look at it. He's taking a look right there at the angle of the five ball uh, break shot into the bottom of the rack. He's deciding if he wants to be here or here for his break shot. I guess he chose the four. He didn't want a lot of angle on that. I, I, I would have chosen this angle, a, more, a sharper angle. A uh, low break ball that's kind of close to the rack, that, that sharp angle, you're going you're gonna to be able to open the balls really well. Let me fast forward to the break shot and we'll take a look. Here we go. Looks like he's shooting with right English and low. And he didn't shoot hard. He definitely shot with light writing, uh, with low. Did you notice the cue ball hit the ball of the rack, and then the cue ball literally curved like this. And it slowed way down. Now, when I shoot that shot, I hit it with a ton of speed because I know the cue ball is going to go to the rail, and then I want the speed in the right English to get that cue ball back up table or back into these balls. But he hit that shot with a speed similar to the first one, to the uh, uh, break that opened up this, this video. Uh, medium soft speed with control. Possibly hoping that this 14 ball would carry him off the 14 over this way to give him a shot in the corner. Possibly. Now he's got a shot. Not on the side is very difficult. I think he has enough room to shoot the 15. Yeah, he's going to roll this forward. You don't want to go too far. Well, he went hard farther than I would have wanted to. Because if, you're, if, if the cue ball stops with a healthy angle on this 14, you can go straight back into the rack. And I think that's what he has to try, even though he has too little angle. When you shoot this shot, you don't want to sacrifice cue ball position for pocketing the ball. Make sure you pocket that ball, which is what he did. And he didn't hit the three at all. So what do you do from here? This is a safety, right? You've got to play safe. Uh, possibly thin the nine, go up table. Well, probably hit, hit this stripe and go up table to the head rail. Uh, I'm going to let this video play. Those of you who have seen this video know what he does. Um, he studies it, evaluating his options. He's ahead 42 to 27 uh, versus Steve Miserak. So he really would like to stay at the table. You don't want to let Steve get to the table. Look what he's looking at. Four ball kick combination, seven, six, and that stripe, and then the nine. Now, these pockets look kind of generous. They might even be five inch, but they're at least four and a half, maybe four and three quarters. So that's more accepting. Uh, if the pockets are, pockets are tighter, you might play safe. But he lined this up very carefully, and then he took time to, to check his angle for kicking this shot. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? So he's probably going to get through this rack as well. What a shot by Mike Zuglin. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks you for watching. Uh, as you're watching this right now, I have been in Arizona for probably five or six days. Let me look at my calendar here. You're watching this on July 2nd, so I've been in, I've been in my new house for five days. And, uh, who knows what I'm going through? I hope I'm having a good time dealing with all the vendors and contractors and deliveries and all the stuff i got to do. Uh, today is the 17th of June. I'm recording this. So the next rack of the week will be from my new house in Arizona, assuming that I get the, the uh, Internet people show up in time and get the, uh, get the Internet going. I think I'm going to be able to get fiber optic Internet. So that will be really cool. Uh, if I don't, I'm going to be on, on Star.